Welcome back to AP Chemistry, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're continuing to learn about redox reactions, and specifically how to write these equations for redox reactions. So we're going to get back to that, and let's start with this example right here. We're going to take a small piece of barium metal and add that to a, to a beaker of silver nitrate solution. So once again, we know that in most redox reactions, metals react with metal ions. And so you want to start with the barium here. You write that down as Ba. And then we have silver nitrate. So that's a mixture of Ag plus and NO3 negative. Now hopefully by looking at that you can realize that the nitrate is kind of the, the odd one out here, isn't it? It is the, the ion, the anion, that's not going to do anything. So that is the spectator ion. And so we're not even going to worry about that in our overall net ionic equation, are we? So barium uh, metals normally get oxidized into their uh, positive ion form. So hopefully we realize that that's a positive 2. We can predict that from the periodic table. So barium becomes positive 2. And then uh, metal ions get reduced into their elemental form. So silver metal is going to be produced here. So when we write this out, we see barium is being oxidized and silver is being reduced. And so you write the overall balanced equation. It looks like this. Now, you might notice that this is really not balanced because our equations have to be balanced both in charge and number of atoms. So th the number of atoms looks good. We have one barium, one silver on both sides. But this, the charge is messed up. We have one, a plus one on the left side and a plus two on the right side. So we actually have to balance the charge by putting a two in front of this to make the plus two work out. But now, as you can see, we've messed up the silver atoms, so we have to do this over here. So now we have an overall balanced equation. Now, let's take a look at another way to write redox reactions, because what I just did by, you know, balancing the charge and everything, that may look a little confusing. So I'd like to show you a way to write reactions that is a little bit easier, or it might be easier for you. We're going to take this reaction, an iron nail, and we're going to drop it into a solution of copper 2 sulfate. Now to do this, you have to realize what the spectator ion is going to be beforehand. Okay? If you realize that it's a metal and a metal ion that's reacting, then hopefully you can see that we have this, uh, this iron here that's going to react with the copper 2, and that the sulfate is the spectator. That's the part that we're not going to worry about. So iron is written Fe, and then copper 2 is written like this, copper 2 plus. Now, what will iron turn into? What's well, going to turn into iron ions? So let's say iron 2 ions. And then copper 2 is going to be reduced into copper metal. So we're going to write that. At this point, we can see that we have the beginnings of some reactions here. But what we want to do also is balance the charge. Because hopefully you can see that on the left side over here, for iron we have a total charge of 0. And iron is a, a plus 2 over here. So you need to balance that by adding some negative charge to this side of the equation so that everything is balanced out. So I'm going to add two electrons right here so that now the total charge of everything is back to zero. I can do the same thing for this second part of the reaction. We have a plus two on our copper and our copper of course is zero because it's just a metal. So to balance the charge we need two electrons over here on the left side. So it's going to look like that. So what we've just done is we've written what are called two half reactions for this. And so these half reactions kind of tell us what's going on here. As you can see in the first one, we're losing electrons because electrons are being pushed out on the end of the reaction, on the product side. So that is an oxidation, you know, lose electrons oxidation. And then over here, we're gaining electrons, and so this would have to be reduction. Gain electrons is reduction. Well now, to get an overall balanced equation, we're going to add these two together, 
And of course, the two electrons on the right side cancel out with the two electrons on the left side, and we get this overall balanced equation. And so this time, we didn't have to worry too much about uh, the balancing. It kind of balanced itself. This is called the half reaction method for writing redox. And this is, it, it might look a little bit more complicated, but this is very useful for when we talk about electrochemistry in a few weeks. So we're going to use this method generally to write these. Let's try another one. A strip of zinc is placed into a solution of gold 3 chloride. So we have zinc, and so that's Zn, and we have to realize it's going to react with a metal ion, which is gold 3, so that's Au3+. Chloride is the spectator, isn't it? So we're not even going to worry about that. So zinc turns into what? Well, hopefully you see it turns into an ion form. And zinc is always plus 2 in its ion form, isn't it? So that's what it's going to be. And then gold ions turn into gold atoms. And so that's the basic idea there. Well, now we have to balance the charges on here. If we look at this, we have a 0 on the left side and a plus 2 over here. So to get all the charges equal, I want to put two electrons on this side. So now everything is balanced out for charge. And over here, I have a plus 3 versus a 0. So I need to add three electrons over here so that the charge balances out. So now I can look at these two half reactions and say, ah, here we're losing electrons. So that is oxidation. And looks like the gold ions are gaining electrons. So that's reduction. So we can pinpoint which half reaction goes with the oxidation, which one is reduction. And we can say pretty easily that zinc is being oxidized and the gold 3 ions are being reduced. Now, let's add these reactions together. You might notice that the electrons don't cancel out quite as nicely as they did in the last example. You never want to have electrons in an overall balanced equation. They just don't need to be there. So, in order to make these electrons fall out whenever I add them together, I'm going to multiply the, the first one by 3, like that, and multiply the second one by 2, like this. So now I have 6 electrons that just go away whenever we add them together. So we, the overall balanced equation looks like this. And notice that that uh, balances as well. You don't have to worry about you know putting 2s and 3s and how many atoms and how many. You know, this was all done up in the half reaction part of it. So that kind of simplifies our work whenever we're looking for a balanced equation, which, of course, we are. Let's try another example. A piece of aluminum foil is placed into a solution of nickel-2 nitrate. So once again, a metal is reacting with a metal ion. So aluminum is reacting with the nickel-2. And so I can just ignore the nitrate, because that's going to be our spectator ion. So the metal turns into a metal ion, which is aluminum 3. And then the nickel 2 turns into a metal, which is going to be just plain old nickel. Now we can uh, balance the half reactions. We looks like we need to have three electrons on the right side over here, don't we, to balance that out. And over here, looks like this side is the one that's more positive. So I'm going to add two electrons over here. And so we can see that the aluminum reaction, or half reaction, is losing electrons. So that's oxidation. And the nickel half reaction is gaining electrons. So that is reduction. Now, when it's time to add these together, once again, you can see that those, these electrons don't fall out when you add them together. So we're going to have to multiply the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 3 in order to have the same number of electrons in both half reactions so that, the, that they don't show up in the overall balanced equation. So here is our overall balanced equation. So once again, you can see that the half reaction method helps us to figure out pretty easily what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. It helps us to balance the equation overall as well. Now, before we go too far into redox, we do, uh, we do need to clarify that some metals are more reactive than others. Now, this is a series, and you don't have to memorize this or anything, but this is a series 
called an activity series. And the way this works is, is metals tend to be oxidized by metal ions. But guess what? They're only oxidized by the ions that are underneath them on this activity series. So that means that these, these metals that are up here toward the top are very commonly oxidized because there are a lot of metal ions underneath them that could trigger that oxidation. Whereas down here toward the bottom, these metals don't get oxidized quite as often because there aren't as many ions underneath them on the chart to trigger the oxidation. So these metals down here, like copper and silver and gold, well, they don't oxidize uh, quite as easily. So let's talk about some examples and how this would work. So if we had nickel, and we add that to a solution of chromium-3, well, nickel is right here on the chart. And chromium-3, well, it's above it, isn't it? So yeah, that's not going to work. That's a no reaction because a metal is only oxidized by metallic ions that are underneath them on the activity series. So how about nickel with tin-2? Is that going to work? Well, here's nickel. Ah, yes, tin-2 is underneath it, so that is going to work. So we'll have nickel ions and tin metal produced. How about sodium and zinc-2 ions? Well, here's sodium. Are zinc-2 ions underneath it? Ah, sure thing. So we're going to get sodium ions and zinc metal. This is not balanced, so we got to do that, that to balance it. What about sodium metal and barium ions? Let's see here. Here's sodium. Uh, barium ions are too high, so that's a no reaction, isn't it? What about gold and sodium ions? Well, here's gold. Yeah, there's nothing underneath gold, is there? There are no ions underneath gold. So guess what? That's a no reaction either. Which, by the way, that explains why a lot of uh, coins and possibly jewelry is made of gold. Because if you were to, to immerse your gold ring into a salt solution, it, you don't want it to corrode, do you? So it's a good thing that gold is way down here on the series. Now, let's try an example here with a, a very special case, hydrogen. You know, hydrogen, as you can see, is, is fairly far down this activity series, almost at the bottom. You know, all the metals above hydrogen can be oxidized by hydrogen ions, but only in a strong acid. And so you might remember there aren't too many of those. Some common strong acids, acids would be uh, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, sulfuric, you know, acids like that are going to be able to uh, react with these metals above it. Only group one and two metals can oxidize the hydrogen in water molecules. And so we'll see how that works. Let's take a look at how that does work. If you ever see the reduction of water, the half reaction is always going to be this. Okay. Honestly, I would recommend just learning this half reaction right here, the reduction of water. You know, and one way that I remember it personally is I just noticed they all have twos in them. You know, two waters, pick up two electrons, and you make two hydroxides and a hydrogen, which is an H2. So there's a two in that one as well. Okay, so you just have to learn that half reaction. So yes, I would say that that would be something on our list of things to learn. So learn this. Let's try an example or two here. Let's try a pellet of lead metal is dropped into a solution of hydrochloric acid. Well, we have the lead metal, and so we have Pb here, and we know that an acid, this is a strong acid, so this is going to react with the positive ion, the hydrogen ion there. And so the lead is going to be oxidized, as metals usually are, into lead 2. And then hydrogen is going to become hydrogen gas, H2. Now, of course, this is not balanced, so i got to balance my H's. Well, now I can balance charge. So it looks like we have lead and lead 2. This is the more positive side, so I want to add two electrons to balance that out. And then for the second half reaction, I have, looks like the left side is more positive. I've got, you know, I had plus 1, but there are 2 now, so it's positive 2 versus 0. So 
I'm going to put two electrons over here. And if you're wondering, does lead actually get oxidized by this acid? Well, we can look at the activity series, and sure enough, lead is here, and you know, hydrogen ions and an acid are certainly below that, so that would work. So over here in the half reactions, it looks like we are uh, losing electrons, so that is oxidation, and we're gaining uh, electrons here, so that is reduction. So when you add this together, the two electrons will cancel out, so we can just add these up as they stand, and here's the overall balanced equation. Lead metal and two hydrogen ions aqueous yield lead two ions aqueous and hydrogen gas. Let's try one more. A piece of sodium metal is dropped into water. Well, once again, the rule is only group one and two metals will react with water, and sodium is a group one metal, so this is, this is going to work. So we have sodium that's being reacted, and then we have water. I'm just going to go ahead and write the reduction of water. You know, we got uh, two waters and two electrons will equal two hydroxides and a hydrogen molecule. Just go ahead and write that out. And then we have sodium here. That's going to turn into sodium ions. And you want to balance this out. This is the positive side, so we're going to put an electron there to balance that out. And so we're losing electrons here, so this is oxidation, and water is gaining electrons, so it is being reduced. Now, when it's time to add these together, you can see that you know, th these electrons don't equal out, do they? So we need to multiply the top one by two to make everything work out. And when you add these together, here's the overall balanced equation. Two sodium atoms plus two water molecules liquid, yield two sodium ions aqueous, and two hydroxide ions aqueous, and a hydrogen molecule in its gas form. This has been kind of a long video. We've gone through several, hopefully enough examples that you kind of get the hang of this now to see how to write redox reactions using the half reaction method. Hope you understand how to use the activity series now as well. If you learned something from my video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, that way YouTube will share these AP Chemistry videos with other students who'd like to learn as well. Uh, I want you to get a 5 on your AP exam. I want you to do well in this and learn how to write these redox reactions. Uh, please ring that bell so that you'll be notified of future videos in this AP Chemistry Complete course. Join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together.